Lately, there has been a surge of interest in toroidal propellers online, and for good reason. Research institutions and businesses have demonstrated that the unique torus blade shape enhances the efficiency and potency of boats and drones, all while producing minimal noise. That said, this video delves deeper into the toroidal blade design, exploring how it can be utilized in other applications such as planes and wind turbines. Propellers are designed to take a fluid, typically air or water, and push it through using a rotating motion. The unique design of toroidal propellers offers several advantages over regular propellers. Unlike traditional propellers, toroidal propellers distribute vortices evenly across the blades, resulting in reduced cavitation and tip vortices, which enhances efficiency and reduces noise. This phenomenon, known as capitation, is especially evident when viewing the propellers underwater where there are hardly any bubbles emanating from the tips of the blades. Moreover, toroidal propellers also draw in fluid from a greater distance, resulting in increased thrust, which is easily observable when observing dye being pulled from a greater distance by the jet stream. Interestingly, the toroidal propeller's design shares similarities with the ancient Archimedes screw and was utilized by the ancient Egyptians to extract water from wells with minimal effort. In 1800, a man named Shorter was granted a patent for using a screw that could move in response to the motion of a ship. John Erickson invented the ship propeller and incorporated the landmark device into his design for the Civil War ironclad the Monitor. Erickson was born in the Swedish province of Vermin, and at the start of his career, he helped plan a Swedish canal. In late 1800, the Wright brothers made the first successful aircraft propeller with a twisted airfoil design. Early versions of the aircraft propeller were made to look like rotating screws. But let's look at more information about how the torpedo propeller came to be. David B. Suckend proposed a patent in 1969 that showed how a torpedo propeller works and how it could be used in pumps and cars. David explained that this wasn't a good business idea at the time because the blades couldn't be made. Since the patent ran out about 20 years after David B. Suckend came up with the idea, he was clearly 20 years ahead of his time. This patent from 2011 shows a double toroidal propeller that is designed for aircraft propulsion and includes this interesting diagram showing how the propellers would be mounted on a turboprop plane building. In this project, a PhD student in Sweden named Alexandria looked at this plane's propeller and other things to improve it even more. Alexandria found that a propeller with the same number of blades but a different design worked better in terms of airflow and made less noise. But he said it was harder to design and optimize than the normal propeller. Having said that, after seeing some of the designs for this box propeller, I would love to see it in action on a full-size or model aircraft. I think it's also important to talk about annular wing planes when talking about planes. The idea behind these wings is the same as that behind toroidal propellers, reducing the tip vortices to reduce drag. But these aren't used much on planes anymore for a number of reasons, including how hard they are to build, how bad they are at storing fuel, and how hard they are to control. The idea did, however, lead to winglets, which are often used to reduce tip vortices. Also, a new version is being made that looks a lot like the toroidal propellers. It's called the spiroid winglets. Wind turbines are the next cool thing that can be improved by the toroidal blades. This is also why a desk fan wouldn't make a good wind turbine. So I'd be interested to see how a toroidal blade made for a wind turbine would work. However, using new blade designs isn't the only way to make wind turbines more efficient. By reducing the tip vortices, winglets like those on airplane wings can boost the efficiency of wind turbines by more than 4%. It may even be possible to add spiroid winglets. As we saw earlier, winglets could help both the wind turbines they are on and the wind turbines downwind by making the air behind them less turbulent. In this paper from 1994, you can see another planned use for wind turbines with a toroidal shape. In this case, a torus is used to help keep a floating offshore wind turbine from moving around. From what I can see, it looks like the designers made the base less likely to fall over by moving the weight of the stabilizing device away from the center. This is true even though the total weight of the base is the same. This is what is known as the moment of inertia. This is the same reason why a skater spins faster when their arms are close to their body and slower when their arms are out. The higher the moment of inertia, the harder it is to spin something. Even though it was an interesting idea, this design was thrown out because it was too hard and expensive to make at the time. 
But if we look at more recent designs for floating wind turbines, we can see that the idea of increasing the moment of inertia by moving the weight away from the center is still there, but the designs are simpler and less expensive. So, is the toroidal propeller best for wind turbines? From what I've seen, the toroidal blade designs seem to be most effective when used underwater. This is why I would love to see more testing of them in pumps or hydro turbines. I'm not sure how much benefit they would have if a casing already surrounds the propeller or turbine as this would already limit the tip vortices. However, if it can improve the efficiencies, it would have significant impacts on energy generation and heat pumps where the pump efficiency is a key component in the overall system efficiency. So let me know if you find anything related to this, as it would make an interesting future video. As you're still watching, please subscribe to the channel as I think you'll enjoy the other videos that I make.